question is that part... Mr Chair. Sarah Dowling. Thank you, Mr Chair. Yes, a pleasure again to rise uh, with respect to part two of this film's videos and publications classification interim restriction order classification amendment bill. Um, yes, talking about the consequential amendments to the Principal Act um, as brought about by this small but technical and very useful uh, bill, Mr Chair. So, talking and, and drawing attention to clause um, eight with respect to um, inserting uh, section 107 um, as amended, um, the inspector may seize um, publications. Again, drawing our attention to the fact that um, there needs to be tools in the toolbox that once we bring about interim um, restrictions that um, the monitors of this, the, the, the people that will um, bring about compliance of this will have the tools in their toolbox to be able to um, make sure that the interim orders are adhered to, which of course is extremely um, important. So um, that consequential amendment um, has occurred, um, in particular um, the words publication is being publicly displayed in contravention of um, the certain, certain sections um, with public display of the publication constitutes an offence. So I'm just tidying that one up, sir, to make sure again that that toolbox is full and complete. Um, moving on to Clause 9 and the consequential amendments to the Principal Act in this Part 2, um, and again um, Section 133 um, is amended um, and talks about um, in Subsection 2, a person who commits an offence against Subsection 1 is liable on con convic um, conviction of a fine in the case of an individual, um, $3,000, or in the case of of um, a body corporate company, um, $10,000. So again, drawing our attention to the fact that um, if there is a breach, there needs to be consequences. And um, while some people may see this as um, limited um, scope in fines, I think it is still very much um, a deterrent when you're a, um, a person or a retailer um, selling publications or um, um, somebody who is um, a, a teaching um, certain literature, exploring certain literature and not complying with an interim order. Um, so it's important to, to um, have those offences there to maintain the balance between, of course, freedom of speech and um, the public good, to make sure that certain classes of people are, of course, um, protected if there is something that is seen as offensive within the publication. So, look, I think that part two is, um, is obviously, of course, needed when you start amending a parent or a principal act. There are always consequential amendments um, that require tidying up, and with the bringing in of this new regime, a more flexible regime um, of interim orders, there are, of course, consequential amendments that are required to make sure that the offences provisions make sense, that the interim restriction provisions make sense. And um, the way that the officials have worked on the structure of this bill um, has um, been exceptional. Um, interestingly, Mr Sewer, bringing the, the parts into a more um, logical order, I think at one stage there were several parts, so we could have been debating this for much, much longer, Sewer. Um, but they've brought it about and tidied it up that there are only two parts, and then, of course, um, the title. So, um, look, we thank the officials and um, I thank the work and the debate that the Justice and Electoral Select Committee had on this fine, technical but small bill. John O'Neill. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I just want to actually fire a couple.